Bulldogs at Vanderbilt, 2023 season getting underway. You want to be here. I'm here. Coach Maynard, the Bulldogs here? Bulldogs here. We ready. Find out what happened next from the Alabama A&M Football Review. But head coach, Connell Maynard. Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by Protective Life. Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church and University Kia. Good evening and welcome to the Alabama a &M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie, happy and blessed to be here. Coach, the Bulldogs go up to Vanderbilt to start the season. We go up in weight division playing the Southeastern Conference in football game with Vandy. Coach, you start the opening drive of the game and go 20 plays. No one expects that to happen. You got us yelling and screaming like the Bulldogs going to win the game. Well, that was the, that was the plan, you know, and uh, we did. We had a great opening drive. Uh, we took what the defense gave us. Um, the guys made plays that they were supposed to make. And when we do that, we, we're a pretty good football team, as we showed that opening drive. Uh, we would love to have gotten seven points out of it, uh, but we got the three, which we had to have, and, uh, and took the early lead. I can ask you this in the pregame show, Coach. Some people don't like playing these games, but you found some gold in that, and yesterday you proved that you can recruit and coach and probably even play in the SEC if you had an opportunity. Well, you know, um, we're going to always try to get the best players possible. And, uh, you know, you play those – try to play one money game, uh, and, you know, for, for the program. And then, you know, our guys – it's a great opportunity for our guys to showcase what they can do uh, against the SEC opponent, right. uh, the best conference in college football. And, uh, you know, we, we was out, outnumbered a little bit. You know, they got 85 scholarships down 63. Uh, but, you know, we don't make excuses. We're going to go compete, and uh, that's what we did yesterday. Offensive line coach Marcus Lawrence said to me that we want to unplug the scoreboard and treat this as a championship boxing match. You brought the physicality to the game. The telling moment, as people would say on social media, was that Vanderbilt had their starters in in the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah, they did, and uh, you know, you know, you just got. I guess I can only run my program. You know, uh, we we'd already taken a couple of our starters out in the fourth quarter and mm. um, trying to get some other guys some action, then trying to keep guys healthy. That's what's right. most important. Is uh, we want to keep our guys healthy for the uh, swag run, and this week and and the rest of the season. So. Um, you know, that's just a, a coaching decision on, on his part. Uh, but he got a great football team. Uh, they, he did a great job of having those guys prepared. And then he just kind of leaned on us and wore us down there in the fourth quarter. Uh, again, they got more, so many more scholarships and, and bodies. Uh, they kind of just leaned on us and wore us down there late in the third quarter and fourth quarter. Well, you start out strong and you finish strong. Coach, you got a field goal at the end of the ball game. Yeah, yeah, again, that shows that our guys weren't going to quit. You know, we don't have any quit in us. We're going to play for 60 minutes. And, uh, we, again, we would love to have gotten a touchdown down there. Uh, but, you know, we, we ain't got the field goal. We got the points. And uh, you want to get those kickers opportunities, too, in a big-time game. And uh, we could have went for it. It wouldn't have made a difference in the outcome of the game. Right. But I want to get the kicker some more confidence and, uh, and, and, the, and, the, um, and the guys up front that we can block anybody and we can make those kicks. Victor Barbosa, seven points on the night, coach, your leading scorer. What is it like for the rest of the season when your first game goes as well as it did? Well, you know, you're probably going to make the biggest improvement from the first game to the second game. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're looking forward to do. You know, we're going to watch this tape and uh, we're going to learn from it and hopefully not make the same mistakes again. And I think – once we watch this tape and we're going to realize that when we do what we're supposed to do, play the defense call, play the offense call, make the play we're supposed to make, we got a pretty good football team. It's when we do our own thing, don't keep contained, uh, drop balls, you know, miss tackles, uh, then we're not very good. So um, I think the good news is everything that – most of everything that happened is correctable. And so we just got to get it corrected and don't make the same mistakes again. Did you find out something about your team that you did not know? before last night? I don't think so. I, I knew I kind of figured that those guys was uh, going to compete. I knew we had a, a pretty good football team. 
and uh, and they, I knew they weren't going to quit, and they didn't. So uh, I kind of, you know, from watching these guys, been coaching so long, you kind of know what you got, and uh, I think we got a chance. And, folks, you will see what kind of chance the Bulldogs had. We take a look at the first half highlights right here, the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Mann. Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book Fair Market Value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs! Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. In golf, if you make a mistake, there is a mulligan. Well, in God, if you make a mistake, there is mercy. Aren't you glad God has mercy for your mistakes? Hello, I am P.T., Pastor Troy. I want to invite you to come and worship with us at the Fellowship of Faith, where Jesus is exalted and the Word is explained. We love Alabama a &M. Go Bulldogs! Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Daryl brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. They're student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church a church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Quick programming note, coach. You met a friend of mine, a high school classmate of mine, Randy Satterfield. And I thank you, Randy, for watching the show and others. But coach, you got a feeling now that when Huntsville gets behind you, they get behind you. Yeah, you know, uh, I get that a lot, you know, when I'm out. So, and I had a chance to meet um, Randy at Full Moon. And uh, he told me he was, 
uh, a longtime friend of yours, and uh, he watched the show to see me, not you. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> and with that said, after the first half, Coach, it's an intense ball game. We bring physicality. It means Vanderbilt had to match our physicality if they expected to win the game. So what are you telling your student athletes at halftime? Continue to do what we was doing. You know, um, we had to get back to what we did that first drive and uh, continue to do that because we kind of <clears throat> – Kind of stalled out after that first drive and uh, told the guys, we got to continue doing what we did that made us successful in that drive to be successful again in the second half. Defense, I thought we had played great at halftime, only giving up 12 points. Of course, we gave up the safety on the block uh, punt. Uh, so the defense was playing great. They'd only given up one touchdown. And uh, they needed to continue doing what they was doing, get off the football field on third down, uh, try to get some turnovers. And uh, we, we, we felt good at halftime. We just uh, didn't play as well as I have. Coach Maynard, I know now what you mean about execution. In the walkthrough, we heard coaching about what to watch for in a block attempt. And at Vanderbilt did exactly what you said they were going to do. And we just didn't execute the protection. Correct. It's always about execution. We preach all the time the separation and preparation. So our guys are prepared, but at the end of the day, they got to go out and execute. And the other thing we talk about all the time is, uh, you know, one big play, you know, it will get you beat. You got to be consistent. And that's where we wasn't. We wasn't consistent. You know, we had a long pass uh, to Terrell to get us right back in the game, make it 19 to 10. Uh, but then we fizzled out again. We had too many drops. Uh, I think Terrell had a drop. CJ had a drop. Hammer had a drop. Uh, Turner had a drop. Uh, and that's the consistency we're trying to get these guys to learn that we have to be consistent. You know, flashes of greatness will get you beat. We had the long pass to Terrell, but we lost. We have to be consistent like we were on the first drive, and then we got a chance to beat everybody that we play. I can hear someone's auntie asking right now, Coach, aren't you being a little bit hard, expecting too much from the student athlete? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're on scholarship. They play D1 football. You're supposed to make those plays. <clears throat> I mean, that's what we're here for. You know, I mean, this ain't Pop Warner. You know, this is D1 football. Make the play. Make the play you're supposed to make. You're on scholarship. People pay good money to come and see you catch the ball, run the ball, hold on to the ball, tackle the ball. So, uh, no, I mean – you know, get, do, do something else. <laughs> Coach, you have a lot of new graduate assistants. How do GAs help your program? Well, if they come in and make plays, they help us. If they don't, they don't help us, you know. So, I mean, it's just like anybody else, a freshman or, or a senior. Uh, if you're going to help contribute, lead, make plays, you're going to help the program. But if you're not, if you're going to be a cancer, or, you know, not going to make plays, you're not going to help the program. And so then you're going to probably have to, I'm not probably have to get rid of you. Because I'm going to do what's best for the team. Mm. Anything that surprised you in the first half that y'all weren't ready for? No, no. They, we knew. We got, we got film on. We watched them play Hawaii. We knew what they was going to do. We knew who they were. We knew what size they were. We knew they was big. They was physical. They was tough. They was smart. They was disciplined. And uh, we was ready to match that. And we did that the first half, but not, so quite, not quite so good in the second half. All right. And so now you're into the second half of the ball game, Coach. 19 to 10 is the score. I said on the air that you had the look on your face that you were trying to win the football game. If there was one other break you think that would have changed the outcome of the game, what would it have been? Uh, I don't know if one break would have changed the outcome of the game because, uh, you know, it wasn't a one-possession game. If it was a one-possession game, 42-35, uh, then I can say one play could change the outcome of the game. But um, – you know, they, they got on they got off us pretty good there in the second half. But we had a couple of good big plays. I thought um, when it was 19 to 10 and it was second down to 10 and they quarterback started to scramble and we had a chance to hit him in the backfield. I think it was Zerion Hayes. Yeah. Hit him and he slid off. I thought that was a big play because he ran around a couple more seconds, then he flipped it to the tight end, and he ran it all the way down. They eventually yeah. scored a touchdown. Uh, you know, if we could have got a sack right there and got him in third and long, and still 19 to 10, we get the ball back. You know, uh, we still got a chance, but it kind of starts slipping away after that. Okay, Coach, and then after we look at the second half highlights, we'll come back and talk about the Bulldogs' home schedule, which always opens with the Lewis Cruz Classic. Lane Dragons, the Lane Dragons, will be playing the Bulldogs. Kickoff is scheduled for 6 o'clock p.m. 
it is not being televised, which means you need to be there or be square. Coach, I know you like seeing the marching maroon and white in the stands. They were not at this game, but the cheerleaders and the and the Bulldog faithful did a great job of representing last night. They always do. You know, I expect nothing different from those young ladies. They do a super job every every week, and uh, uh, they really get ready. They, they practice a lot, and it shows that they practice a lot how good they cheer. Yeah, they asked me if they could toss me in there one day, and I'm a little bit too old for that. When we come back on the Alabama a and Football Review, we'll look at those second-half highlights again, and then we'll talk about our upcoming schedule. Darrow brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. There's student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Hello, I'm Fester Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, a church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement, but the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Again, we're always happy and thankful that you're watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. 
I'm Ted Dixie, your host. 47-13 closes out the scoring coach. But the attitude that the team left with quite evident. There was some disappointment in your student athletes because they thought they had a chance to win the game. Yeah, we always do. You know, you always go in thinking you got a chance to win a football game. So we work as hard as we do. We come in and, and uh, all the blood, sweat, and tears, weight room, film room, practice field, is to go win a football game. And uh, at halftime, we had a chance to win a football game. Uh, we didn't continue to play the way we played the first half, and it kind of slipped away from us. But the guys knew uh, that we was in the football game, and uh, we had an opportunity, and we just didn't we just didn't seize the opportunity. But the Bulldogs have another opportunity to do well. The Lane Dragons come to town for the 12th annual Lewis Cruz Classic. We've got a concert with Najee that we coach. We've got the coaches' breakfast. You're going to hear all kind of stories, and they get funnier as the years go on. When you were a student-athlete coach, and by the way, you are a Hall of Fame student-athlete, you used to do impersonations of your coach. What is it like when you hear? Do you feel like the student-athletes love you more when they're giving impersonations, or you think you might just be too hard on them? They're just getting some relief, comic relief. No, they, they watch everything we do. Not only me. They only do me, but they do all the coaches, and uh, – they, they watch and listen to everything that we do, and they go back and practice it. And then when they get a chance for a rookie show or opportunity, they bring it all out. And uh, it's funny. I, I mean, I like it. Uh, I, I don't hold anything against them when they do me. I like to see it. I like to see how they see me. And uh, when they redo me, uh, I get to see exactly how they feel, and they, they be cracking up, man. It's funny. Uh, I like it. It's okay. If you listen to the broadcast of the Lewis Cruz Classic, which starts at 5.30 p.m. on 90.9 FM WJAB, we will have several of Coach Cruz's student athletes on hand, and we're going to see and hear some pretty, imper pretty funny impersonations. Coach, you get a chance to tell your student athletes that the highest paid defensive player in the Canadian Football League is Anthony Hardwork Lanier, who you see if you come into the lobby of the George H. Hobson Fieldhouse is on one of our wraps on the wall. You also get to talk about a quill glass. You get to talk about the achievements that your teams have had. That is one of the reasons that people come here when they transfer. Yeah, and then you also got Robert Mathis and John Stallworth. You know, uh, tr great tradition. And, uh, and we also want to be the best FCS program, second to none, and uh, all, our, all our sports, not just football. So we relay that to uh, our recruits and their parents, uh, the changes that we're trying to make and where we want to go with this program and the rest of our programs. And if, ask them, do they want to be a part of it? You know, um, you know, I got 18 championship rings and counting is what I tell them. So we're going to get more. And so we want you to be a part of that. We want you to be a part of that 19th uh, ring that we get. And also, don't forget, uh, Saturday is maroon out. Okay, so wear your maroon. And uh, come out and support these guys. We're going to work hard this week and be ready to go. And I want to see everybody in their maroon. Do what Coach tells you to do, because if you don't do what he tells you to do, you're going to get a chance to roll about 140 yards down that football field. <laughs> Coach Lane, a Division II opponent coming out of the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, where A&M used to be, where FAMU, Bethune-Cookman used to be a part of. Those old school rivalries and now Lane, a new rivalry for us, What's it like playing down? You punched up last week. Now you got to punch down. Yeah, I mean, Lane is a good football program. You know, they beat Tennessee State last last year. I think they lost to Miles yesterday. Uh, but, again, we respect all fear none. Uh, they're going to go back and watch their tape. They're going to look at their mistakes. And they're going to be a much better team this week than last week. You're always going to be better uh, week two than, than week one. That's when you make your most improvements. So we expect those guys to be a lot better and play a lot better than they played last week. And so we got to do the same thing. We got to be ready. We got to play a lot better. Uh, they're going to come in here trying to get a W. And uh, we got to be ready to play. And, uh, and, and if we execute the way we're supposed to, we got a great chance to win a football game. Some people will call this a trap game. You play well at Vanderbilt, then you're starting to look forward to your first Southwestern Athletic Conference game. That This one may not get their attention. So how are you going to keep their attention this week? Oh, we're going to keep their attention. It's the next game. It's the, it's the next game. And we, we can't live off last week. We can't live off the first quarter. We can't live off the second quarter. You can't live off a play that you may win, lose, or draw. You can't do that. You have to go out and continue to play, continue to work hard, and uh, get prepared for your next opponent. We're going to play this game like it's the biggest game of the season because it is because of the next football game. And also, Coach, you always reminded me of this. The more you win during a season, the more important the next game becomes. 
But as you're saying right now, this game means you get to tighten up what you need to tighten up and make a lot of improvement from last week. Yeah, we got we got to worry about ourselves. Uh, we got a lot of improvement to do. Uh, we has, we showed some flashes of greatness, but again, that'll get you beat. So we got to be consistent. We got to worry about A and M. We take care of A and M. Uh, we'll be fine. Um, and then it's the Lewis Cruz Classic. You know, uh, we got to get up for that. We got to respect and pay pay homage to. Uh, uh, Mr. Cruz, and he's a trailblazer. Uh, he's the reason we're here, the reason I'm here coaching here, and, and our players are playing. And so um, it's a great opportunity. It's great another opportunity, and uh, we got to take advantage of it. Quickly, Coach, now you have the dog houses in the end zone. You're going to have lots of folks wearing maroon in the ball game. How do you keep the student-athletes' attention? Because this is almost like another homecoming game. Yeah, it's going to be crowded. I mean, it was a nice crowd last week. You know, that, that, that crowd was loud and it was in the stands was packed at Vanderbilt and we expect big crowds every game we play this year. We got a lot of good football games starting with this one in Lewis Cruz Classic. Um, it's probably going to be close to being sold out. And, uh, you know, we just got to be prepared and we got to be ready and do our job because all those people that's going to be in the doghouse and in the stands and in the boxes that pay, they want to see a good show. And so my job is to get these guys ready and so we can put on a good show for all these people paying their good hard-earned money to come and see us play. Now, game day will be a little different in North Alabama and Southern Tennessee. Our athletics director, Dr. Paul Bryant, will have a television show that will be live at 8.30 in the morning on Saturday. You have to go through your dial to find it, but it's a local channel. And then after that, we get ready. You'll be able to hear us as we start at 90.9 FN WJAB. At 5.30 p.m., kickoff is at 6. Coach, about 5.15 in the evening, what are you going to be thinking about? 5.15 when? Game day? Game day. Uh, I'll be just heading out on the field. Got a 6 o'clock kickoff. So uh, I usually go out on the field around that time and uh, watch our guys warm up, see how they vibes feel, uh, see who's dropping balls, catching balls, who's throwing darts. And uh, just watching our guys uh, uh, get ready to play a football game. So um, same thing I always do. The guys, the haze in the barn, the guys be prepared at that point. Now we just got to go out and execute at a high level. And you can be a part of that action. Go to aamusports.com to find out information about the schedule and tickets. As Coach just said, it's getting close to a sellout. Be there, be square. We need your face in the place and your feet on the concrete. So for Coach Maynard, I'm Ted Dixie. Happy to have you as a Bulldog. Go ahead and get your collar and your chain and be ready to be let off as coach leads the Bulldogs onto the field. Thank you again for watching another Alabama A&M football review with head coach Connell Maynard. Also, also, don't forget about our uh, breakfast with Coach Maynard Thursday morning, 8 a.m. Uh, get your ticket, $65. Come on, we're going to eat some breakfast and have a good time. I might even tell a joke or two. Bulldog fans, thank you for joining us today for the Alabama A&M University Football Review. Bulldog faithful, we encourage your support and participation. Until next time, go Bulldogs!